Right. Uh, so this talk about this uh, sort of new sort of amplifiers we developed under this hyperlayer program. And that's a kind of vast amount of work has been done, but I just picked up a few examples uh, because of the limited time. Uh, right, I'm going to go with that one. So, uh, just to start with, we already know that one now. Uh, if you try to go for a currently uh, SMA uh, kind of high level tablet, if you think of that kind of 0.4 dB per kilometer loss, you can easily call what it doing sort of 1200 to all the way up to the 1650. And going beyond that, at this show in the morning, you can have the hollow code fiber and lowest loss allies actually uh, you know, up close to my phone. So, you have a kind of wide band available, but we have the amplifier to cover that band. So, this work was been done to, to show that, yes, it is possible, the amplifiers are available and we can do that. So, to start with, what I put in here, so did you think of like the other kinds, right, or the other drop fibers? So, what sort of wavelength it can cover, what band it can cover? If you think of like that, you know, currently uh, they are being used in this age, and if you move on to the kind of tritium and holmium, you can have it. Around 500 nanometer can be covered, but then there is also big gap here and there. So new material we are working on, that's what we call the Bismar one, that can cover nicely this gap. Okay? So, so, so this talk will be like trying to cover one type of particular type of you know, geometry we have been working on, we call the multi element fiber and the cover in the LBM bank, which is around 1536 to 1615. Then uh, from the thulium and holmium one, from 1650 to 2150, and if you go for the Bismarck one, just to be focusing on at this stage, but you have to have a move there. So that can add out from 1320 to 1360, exactly done. Right, so to go with the kind of uh, your uh, MEA pilot, those who don't know, question is that, yes, all of, many of you know that, or almost everyone know that, on about the multi-core and kind of few modded fiber. So in that case, there are multiple cores are there in a, in a single fiber. What we're trying to do, so we're trying to put a bundles of fiber together and try to draw them actually together. Good thing with that one, and it's been shown here, because the couple of three pictures I've shown here. So there are different sort of geometry, you say. If you want to have a transmission fiber done, so the geometry is slightly different, but you can have an amplifier. So in this case, you can see that on seven of them we put there and actually in case amplified we have been using kind of pipe. Okay, I'll go through that one you know, in uh, a few slides, but I will tell you. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about this kind of the, uh, your uh, passive one. But the idea is that if you want to develop a passive fiber at the same time, the fiber has to be low loss, strength has to be equally good, and also we, we so far kind of gone up to 12 kilometers of the pipe. Right. So to start with, and uh, so what is shown here, so as it mentioned that kind of C or seven <coughs> can be put together and then drawn under the same coating material. Good thing is that one, you remove the coating and then you can have a kind of you know spun out. Uh, you know, so question is that you don't need additional sort of multiplex and demultiplex but to develop in this case. Okay, uh, so to start with, let's start with the kind of code pump. To see that one, whether the geometry has got any impact or not. So in that case, we need a kind of three sort of element put together at the end out, and also we want the seven of them. So we can see that kind of you know the sort of gain and all those things. So there's kind of no penalty of the gain or the noise figure just because of your kind of geometry. You can see that. So this is not quite practical if you have seven of them or even also more than that, and you are going to put palm, in which case you have a kind of you know, WM and palm and all those things. So classical thing, what they meant in the morning, uh, that came from the kind of hyper kind of fiber laser concept. So we have a we have a sort of uh, question is that in MEF, where in the middle one, it think of as a passive fiber and it's surrounded by your kind of dot core. And the way it works, so basically you put the pump into one of them and it's been coupled to the, the active fiber of that. Now, straight away to the kind of uh, your uh, the results. So in this case, We've done actually five of them. Out of five, one is actually the passive one, where you lost the pump, and surrounding four are basically your kind of active fiber. So you can see here, so if you see the four of them, I'm talking about four sort of LBM LBM line core, and we purposely picked up three, four different sort of concentrations so that it can give you different actuals. Why? I just give you a minute. But 
Now we put them together, it's just only one pump, the pump is coming from there, I believe, yeah, and all, for all of them you see there is a pump, and the signal has been put in a four of them, and that's been amplification being done simultaneously. So using that one, so you can easily have sort of, you know, 37 or 35 dB sort of gain, and sort of relatively, you know, low noise figure around 4 or 5 dB, depending on what you're working on, and which one that you're working on. Now, interesting thing is this, so you can see we can go for a choose and pick. Right, so you have a difference of concentration. Now think of, if you want to go for the L band to C band to other wavelength, so you have to basically have a kind of you know, difference of fiber length, you have to choose, in some cases short, long, and all those things. What we can do nicely, you just take one end and simply splice it to the other. And that way, you can have your also individual concentration, so individual length. You can select also different concentration. So what is showing here, going from one element, and from there, you couple them, you know, you just splice two of them, and splice three of them, and you can see that how much, sort of, what sort of flat gain you can achieve. How much sort of reasonable value. And so the, what's being demonstrated, the next one slide you can see, is a split band one. So one of them, we use for the C1, and other two, we splice them, and you can go for the extended element. So particularly one amplifier, can allow you to cover almost 8 nanometer bandwidth. And that's the capsule Sonia and with a minus 10 dB of input. Right. Now, good. so this is the kind of experimental, uh, so that's the kind of demonstration that's been done to show that the system works. In this case, you have a kind of passive fiber input, you have a sort of amplifier input, and it's a kind of four, four sort of elements of there, three of them are amplifying from this, uh, and the other one which is being used for dark fiber. And you can see basically the air field transmission signal being done. Now, moving on from there, going on to the kind of moving to the longer wave. So we're talking about thulium and holmium. So we saw that one, so thulium can cover you from 1650, 1660 to all the way up to 2000 nm. And beyond that, holmium can cover you up to sort of 2150 or 2175. Right. Let me then talk to you, uh, uh, you know, the, kind of, uh, the, the details about this uh, experimental setup. It's a kind of, uh, there are many things up there. But this one experimental setup has been used to explore the different sort of configuration to how you can extend the bandwidth or from, or one, one, one amplifier cannot allow you to at this point from covering from 1650 to 20 or 2100. So different sets have been picked up. And so what you can see here, right, you have of course the tunable source. In this case, the laser turret being used, which is been operating around 1535 like that way. And schematic one, which says A. Just no additional filter fiber being used. It's typically the sodium fiber used. In the configuration three, what's being done here, you're putting some sort of filter fiber in between, and that I'm talking about your holmium fiber, to suppress your AAC at longer wavelength, so that you can push your tank to the solder wavelength side. And in case of three, the number C, so it's a kind of double pass, double pass, and then you are using also additional your holmium fiber. Now, interesting thing to note, over this course of this kind of you know, the, uh, project, and including also uh, kind of your uh, hyperhighway and also mode gap, so the things being developed, initially when you start with, so it's a kind of interest and loss of the passive components for significant. And then, so the, the system of the components being developed, so you can now individually go to kind of you know, low loss. So sort of amplifier, sorry, sorry, you are, um, the kind of uh, isolator, circulators, and reasonably low loss you can get. Now, jumping to the kind of results. First one. So as you mentioned that one, so in this case, the, the amplifier A, where you don't have any additional to the, sorry, holmium fiber being included. So if you see that one, your gain you are getting around in this wavelength around 1850. And you sort of, uh, you are getting sort of more than 20 dB gain and sort of less than 8 dB noise figure. And you can see that signal to noise ratio, which is kind of 30 dB, kind of in band or out band. Right. Now, schematic B, where you have added a, one element of your holmium fiber. And that's the really shown here. If you compare with the previous one, that's there. So now, what you can see here, so it's a kind of significant reduction of the gain you can have at 1800. 
but that allows you to have a gain C at this point like that. Now, schematic C, where you have a, even also a double pass, and at the same time, you increase more volume to fiber. So you can see here, that's the kind of with the volume, one band of the, so one length of volume fiber here, and you two. So you can clearly see going from the top here to five degree increase, and then another sort of your six degree increase. So it's a significant enhancement has been made in the short weapon. So depending on what architecture you use, you can accordingly your kind of tailor, your amplifier, you know, so what you want to operate at. Now, so from that, now, we need a kind of more power to see that how it works. Uh, so in that case, moving on from your uh, laser dial pumping at 1532, that's been pumped using your final laser. And you can see that also that it's a schematic CBN use, and you can increase also again from here to there. And if you combine all these things, so that's been the summarized here. So basically, what is showing here, that you can have it 29.1 terahertz all the way from 1700 to up to your sort of 2050. <coughs> and that's if you have a kind of 20 dB gain. So, sorry, that's a, yeah, that's if you have a 15 dB gain. And if you have a 20 dB uh, gain, you can think of you can have a sort of over 26 terahertz. Now, moving forward. If you want to push to the sort of side, sort of than 1700, you need to have an additional sort of AAC filtering pipe. And that's been shown here. So previous case was using the polybium as an AAC filtering fiber, but that filtering technique is pretty slow. And it's difficult to bring in something below 1700. So in this case, it's another kind of that particular type of fiber we use, which is a sharp cut off. Or you know, can be initially filtered, and you can see using this kind of fiber, and we should be we be able to get a kind of significant gain below you know, 1700. So uh, that's showing you uh, your gain around 1690, uh, around yes, uh, which is around 28 dB gain, and you will have a kind of also uh, voice now you can see more than 40 dB. Now if you combine all these things, uh, no, I think yeah, okay. Now moving uh, beyond that. Uh, up here, the uh, tritonium one, I'm talking about holmium fiber. And in case of holmium, you can use a pump wavelength, which is at this wavelength, and we actually use a tritonium laser to pump it, or one can use around 1200 or 1250 laser duct. And so this covers particularly this bandwidth from your uh, 2050 up to 2150. So it's a simple schematic being used, and straight away jump into the kind of you know, uh, letters. So you can see that it's possible to get around 40 dB gain and with a kind of noise figure now currently around 7 or 8 dB. That's been used <laughs> by pumping at the trillium lasers operating at around 1750 to 1800. When you use the, your um, laser dart pump operating around 1150, um, yeah, uh, 1150 nanometer, and then you can see that gain can be achieved if you get around 25 dB. Now, if I combine all these two and holmium and what's been shown here, so that's been summarized here. So, thulium can cover in kind of this band, holmium can cover in this band, it can only be 0.3 terahertz, other cases can be 34 terahertz, and you have the 8 for here. The little gap there from, for example, 1620 to, for example, 1650, if we say. So this one can be covered there as well. And that's basically we are working on. Now, from that perspective, and moving on to the Bismarck side, the beauty is this one. This material, it can cover a wide band from 1150 to 1500 and 1625 to 1750. So at this point, under this kind of, you know, uh, this hyperhybrid, we have been exploring this band. So, for your information, depending on what host you use, accordingly you can tune your operating bandwidth. For example, if I use a Bismarck in an aluminum host, you will be able to tune it between 1150 to 1250. If I use phosphorus host, you will be able to use 1300 to 1400. If I use the kind of germanium, 
and copper that one, and going for hydrogen uranium, I can copper that. So that's basically being shown here. But it's a new material. There are quite a lot of challenges that to overcome. But working on that one, the first thing is that still it's not clear what contribute to this kind of emission in our emission. People say that bismuth zero, bismuth one, bismuth clustering, all these things are going on. We are trying to understand what contribute to this emission. Second thing, since that's not quite clear, at this point, if you go slightly higher concentration of bismuth, it doesn't work. So from that perspective, what one has to do is to keep the concentration low. But having concentration low, one is currently using typically around 100 meter long time. No problem with that one if you think of a low power test, but when you try to increase the power and then 100 meter is kind of not good. But other kind of problems are there, which is called the unsaturated loss and excited absorption. I don't try to understand this. Thing. Okay. So all these things contribute to lower bismuth efficiency in current time. When you say lower means it's not as efficient like if you think of them to be. But over this course of this program, we work on this one and, and we'll show you the results in a minute. So to mention that, we've been working on the two particular type of course to cover from 1150 to 1500 nanometer band. So example being shown here, one is silicate, one is silicate host. Right. Typical sort of amplifier configuration, you have pump, signal, and dot fiber, and you measure it. You have to not only engineering the fiber, but at the same time also trying to find out what how, can you engineer the also the pump wavelength to tune your operating wavelength what you want it to have the maximum gain. So what is being shown here, if you use the 11 to 18 nanometer laser diode, you can push the gain to 1800. If you use my end of your 10 to 40 nanometer pump, it's like this water away. So by combining these two, at this 11 which is kind of quite like important on your point on many applications, apart from also the telecom, one can do the frequency doubling, can go for a kind of you know, so what is this straight away uh, hit the kind of laser register, and also in your uh, your light generation. So in this case, it's typically around 12 degree can be got. But working on that one to improve the performance. <coughs> but Interesting thing I have to talk about the file you know, which, which can cover the second uh, telecom bandwidth by using the phosphorus liquid host. <coughs> to take the message from here, there's plenty of kind of you know, fiber being done, and what you found out, why, what is critical about, so what sort of process you use. It can happen that if you start changing the process, it can give you completely different performance in terms of amplitude. So, just to show you that one, three different type of fiber have been used. One of them is fitting here, another one there, another one there. So it's quite a lot of information there, just to take. So out of three fibers, so unsaturable loss, which also, if the low unsaturable loss, it allows you much better performance than amplifier. So you can see that this particular fiber is giving you reasonably low unsaturable loss. We picked up that one and try to work on that. First one with the laser one and see how it works. Typically put in the ring cavity, the pump and signal, the pump is going there, and we're picking up kind of a signal 50 50, 50 percent from this output. And 110 milliwatt output <coughs> this kind of pump. And think of that all being used to pump with the laser tires, which are available to us. Efficiency 18 percent, sort of three times less than what LBM can offer today, but that's reasonably. Sensitive sort of laser, one can say at this stage. Now, from there, move to the amplifier. So, in this case, the nice picture, uh, you can see that one, and you will, be, you will see more details about all these things in the poster. So, you have again pump signal, and you are basically, you know, you can pump it from both ends, from one end, and signal is there, and that's all. Again, in this case, Two different type of pump weapons have been used. If you think of one 1240, you have a gain coming around 1300. If you pick the wavelength pump weapon around 1270, you can push the gain around 1350. So, what it does allow you to, what you can see here, using one pump, 
which is operating on 1240, and then having 5 gain at that point, sort of. Having a longer wavelength around 1270, your gain picks up there. Why not put them together? If you put them together, you can nicely see a flat gain properly exceeding 25 dB all the way from 13 to 18 and up to this point. And you can see it stops here. It stopped here because we still didn't have the kind of you know, signal to check how far you can go. So, uh, yes, you can see that the flat gain that's been demonstrated, and you can clearly see that you can easily extend longer than that. Currently, the fiber is being used 150 meter. Pump altogether in combine is around 700 milliwatt, and input signal was minus 10 dB. So that's the kind of like, you know interesting achievement we make from that kind of smaller than that. Now. This can put me to so that, so even at some point, a small signal gain, we're getting almost 29 dB. We're working on these fibers, and they're trying to improve the performance further. So it's been shown that a record can be imported from this one, which is 29 dB uh, you know, and put less than 5 dB sort of noise figure, and that work. Uh, as I mentioned that one, current fibers we are using, which is typically 100 to 150 meter long. Now, currently working on kind of new sort of host, new type of kind of fiber, and to reduce the fiber length, to, to try to understand what can contribute to kind of, what sort of bismuth uh, state can contribute to your uh, linear impedations. So, now recent result, what we have achieved, even kind of managed to get lazing at by using sort of 10 meter long fiber. So that's it's not kind of quite efficient, but at least it started showing even by using 10 meter, 50 meter, we should be able to get a sensible sort of amplifier out of that. But also at the same time, the short length of fiber is quite key if you wanted to have a sort of oscillator. In that case, probably 150 to 200 meters not quite useful. And if you want to know more about that one, please go and have a look at the poster. Right, I'm almost uh, done. So what I've shown you, uh, what the work we've done over this course of you know, hyper high um, uh, which is 20 dB gain uh, from 1536 to 1515 uh, by using a multi element fiber. Then your uh, 2 m amplifier and the one m amplifier, that's a fast demonstration by using direct pumping. Uh, that covering from 1650 to 21, uh, sort of 30, which is almost five times wider than AC and L band. So that is giving you 26 terahertz bandwidth uh, by using direct pumping from fully amplified amplifier and 8 terahertz from volume 1. 12 dB gain from this part, which is at 1180. Then we have a kind of, okay, I'm skipping that 18 percent efficiency in the laser one. And also, almost 25 dB gain, fat gain over this wavelength band. And small signal gain, 29 dB, that will be achieved. And this is also been done, but I haven't kind of presented this one, but please go and have a look at the poster. By no means, this is the kind of list that are many, many more people are involved. I can't put them there. And that's pretty much what I wanted to say. <coughs>